welcome to the introduction to the pneumatic conveying system. Now, uh, let us have a brief look that what we discussed in the previous lecture. We had a discussion about the various air filtration system uh, because uh, separation is an integral part of uh, uh, conveying system because solid is being conveyed uh, with the help of uh, pneumatic media like air in this case. Then at the port of uh, disengagement, it need to be separated out from the solid to and the gaseous system. So, we discussed about various uh, separation techniques. Uh, we had a discussion about uh, the compressed air safety because it is a pressurized vessel and uh, sometimes uh, pressure vessel may create a problem as well as uh, because of the temperature engagement in the, the compressed air, then uh, the, uh, the temperature, high temperature surfaces again may create a problem and because of various other chemicals being um, conveyed, you, they are using various processes, they are using uh, the compressed air. Then we discussed about briefly about the, the various kind of a safety devices or safety approaches to be used in the uh, compressed air system. Apart from this, uh, since uh, all these things are electrically powered, so we discussed briefly about uh, the electrical safety. Then we started uh, the pneumatic conveying system, a uh, brief introduction we had given about the uh, pneumatic conveyors and how it can be used in the various kind of the process industries. Now, in this particular lecture or in this particular topic, uh, we are going to discuss that why we are using this pneumatic conveying, what are the different modes of uh, the conveying system. Uh, since um, uh, it, uh, it is having a prominent place in the conveying system, then what are the various advantages and disadvantages associated with the pneumatic conveying system. And then we will start about the basic concept of the pneumatic conveying system. Now, why pneumatic conveying? Now, it is attributed to the fluid dynamics. The concept of fluid conveyance by the pipeline is far from new. It has a very long history um, using dating back to antiquity. Like Romans, they utilized lead pipe for water delivery and sewage disposal. Uh, while Chinese, they employed the bamboo tubes to transport the natural gas. Now, with the invention of the fans to activate, the first pneumatic conveying was introduced in, systematic pneumatic conveying was introduced in 1866 and the history of the pipeline transportation of solid in air is more recent. Now, the vacuum conveying of grains was the first large scale application of uh, pneumatic conveying in late 19th century. Sometimes negative and a positive pressure grain conveying that was popularized in the um, mid 1920s etc. Since then the pneumatic conveying has evolved tremendously and uh, has expanded to include a wide range of particle solids. Now, why it is so important? First and foremost thing that it provides system flexibility. The materials can be carried from a hopper or a silo in one arena to another located at the some distance away um, with the right equipment selection and design. Uh, multiple point feeding can be made into a common line and a single line can be discharged into a variety of receiving hoppers allowing for considerable flexibility in construction and operation. Now, materials can be vacuumed up uh, from open storage or stockpiles with the vacuum system and they are great for cleaning up dust and spills. Uh, these pipelines obviously, it will be with the help of pipeline. So, pipeline can travel horizontally as well as vertically up and down and bends in the pipeline, they can enable any combination of orientation in a single pipeline run. So, when we talk about the transportation, the transporting item vertically up or down is no more difficult than conveying material uh, horizontally. Now, material flow rate you can easily control 
and monitor to ensure that input and output are always correct. And most system may be set up to run totally uh, automatic. Now, pneumatic conveying systems, uh, they are incredibly adaptable. A wide range of materials may be handled and the system and pipeline completely contain them. Now, as a result, potentially dangerous products can be transported in a safe manner and that is very plus point I tell you this is a very important point because uh, the transportation of uh, the dangerous material is always uh, offer a wide uh, attention. Now, these systems normally meet the standards of a local and uh, health and safety legislation, maybe some your state may have some different uh, legislation, your uh, federal or uh, central level you may have different legislation with uh, uh, little or no trouble because there is a low possibility of dust creation. Now, these pneumatic conveying plants, they require a very little floor space and the pipeline can be routed easily through walls, across roof or even underground by bypass existing equipment or structure. So, there is no need to alter the exi existing layout of the plant. Now, pipe bends in the conveying line usually they provide this flexibility, but they also increase the pipeline's total resistance. So, usually your usual fluid dynamics or fluid mechanics law always prevails and resistance when there is a, a, a large amount of resistance then you need to have more and more pumping expenditure. Now, if uh, uh, the conveyed material is friable, bends can cause particle deterioration and sometimes a deposition may take place and is further reduces the, the, the to overall available area. And sometimes if uh, the substance is abrasive, they can cause erosive wear and tear and it can uh, react with the pipeline material and uh, sometimes uh, the effect may be more and more catastrophic. Now, it is suitable for various industries and materials. So, the powdered and granular materials are used in wide range of sectors and many different industries they have pro uh, processes that require their transfer and storages. Now, the bulk materials are transported in variety of industries including agricultural, mining, chemical, pharmaceutical, paint manufacturing and metal refining and processing. Large tonnage, sometimes large tonnage of harvested material such as grains and rice as well as uh, processed goods such as like animal feed, pallets, fertilizers, those who are handled in the agricultural in industries. Now, pneumatic conveying is used to transport a wide range of food goods from wheat to sugar, tea to coffee in a variety of manufacturing processes and the beauty of this particular pneumatic conveying is that you can install these pneumatic conveying process on site easily. Uh, some fine powders uh, like cements, bentonites, uh, they are utilized in the oil sector for drilling. You can easily convey through this pneumatic conveying. Lump coals, crush ores, minerals, they are transported in uh, mining, quarrying, in thermal power plants, pulverized coals and ash. They are both handled in a huge volume. So, it can handle a huge volume of these materials. Soda ash, polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, polypropylene, they come in a range of the form in the chemical industry from fine powder to pellet. It, these industries can utilize this pneumatic conveying. Sand, which is utilized in foundries in a popular manner, it is also used in the glass production, cement, alumina. These are the other elements that uh, pneumatically transported in a big quantities in variety of sectors. Now, let us talk about the mode of conveying. Now, there is a lot of misunderstanding about how materials are transported via pipeline 
and the nomenclature used to describe the flow mode. First, it is important to understand that materials can be transported in batches through a pipeline or sometimes in a continuous fashion. Now, if batch size is small enough, the material can be carried as a single plug in batch conveying. Now, two forms of uh, conveying, they are recognized in continuous conveying in ba and batch conveying if the batch size is large, that is the dilute phase conveying and the dense phase conveying. Now, let us talk about uh, the dilute phase conveying. Now, dilute phase conveying occurs when the material is transported through a pipeline suspended in the air. Almost uh, any material regardless of pi particle size, shape, density, it can be delivered in dilute phase suspension flow through a pipeline. Now, to keep material in suspension in the pipeline, then it is necessary to maintain a minimum value of conveying line inlet air velocity. For uh, most of the material, it is uh, in the order of say 12 to 16 meter per second. Now, everything can be conveyed in dilute phase, flow fed into the pipeline only if conveying air velocity is sufficiently high to maintain the material in suspension. Now, you see the basic anatomy of uh, the, the par particulate flow in the dilute phase conveying. You see this, these are the, the particulate and air. So, you see that uh, discrete uh, uh, particles this reflects that we are under the dilute phase. Now, let us talk about the dense phase uh, conveying. Now, dense phase conveying is when material is transported at a low velocity in a non-suspended state through all parts of the pipeline. The conveying air velocity required for conveying the material is very much lower than that of dilute phase flow. So, what does it mean? It means that if conveying material is abrasive, the wear to the pipeline and its bend will significantly less than that what with the dilute phase conveying and for the friable materials, uh, uh, the degradation of conveyed product will be reduced significantly. Now, again uh, there are two types of flow in dense phase mode. One is uh, sliding or moving bed flow. Now, if material is conveyed in dunes on the bottom of the pipeline or as a pulsatile moving bed. Another one is the slug or plug type of flow in which the material is transported as full bore plug separated by air spaces. Now, let us talk about the sliding bed or moving bed flow. The material uh, with very good uh, air retention properties that is uh, the mean particle size is below about say 50 micron, it can be conveyed with a very much lower air velocity. Most of the fine powders such as cement, floor and fine grades of fly ash are exist in this particular category. Now, in moving bed flow or sliding bed flow, the solid loading ratio of well over say 100 can be achieved if uh, you can say the materials are conveyed with a pressure gradient of about say uh, 20 millibar per meter of horizontal pipeline. Now, for moving bed flows, the solid loading ratio needs to be maintained about uh, 20 before conveying at a velocity lower than required for the dilute phase conveying. The solid loading ratios of uh, well more than say 100 are quite common. The minimum conveying air velocity in sliding bed flow, it can be down to say uh, 3 meter per second. Therefore, it has potential to convey such material 
very economically. So, when we are looking for economical uh, aspect or economical feasibility, this type of approaches are quite favorable. Now, in a traditional conveying system, moving bed flow is only conceivable if uh, material to be transported has a good air retention qualities. This is the foremost requirement. Now, here you see the particulate flow in a sliding bed flow, you see the difference. Now, the typical flow of uh, particles in the horizontal pipeline we have uh, depicted in this uh, particular figure. The vast majority here you see that the vast majority of the material is conveyed in the bottom half of the pipeline with air can carrying a little dust above. You see that this is the little dust and uh, the major part is being at the bottom. Let us talk about uh, the plug type flow. Now, it is uh, essential uh, that the material to be conveyed should have a very good permeability. This mode is appropriate for materials comprising mono sized particle, sometimes referred as a seed or a grains. Now, this is uh, also ideal for product manufacturing in a pelletized form such as polyethylene pellets or nylon. Now, such type of a materials naturally from plug in the pipeline and much of the conveying air will flow through the intercities in the plug, plug type of a flow. Now, this type of a flow when observed through a side glass in a horizontal section of pipeline, it like as shown in this particular figure. Here the, uh, the particulate movement you see in a plug type flow. A relatively high amount of conveying air velocity, it must be maintained for dilute phase conveying. Sometimes this can be ranges from say 10 meter per second to 12 meter per second for very fine part powder to sometimes 16 meter per second for a fine granular material with much higher speed for larger particles and higher density materials. Now, air velocity for dense phase transferring this can be as low as say 3 meter per second and even lower in some cases. So, the fine particle size they require to provide the necessary air retention Particle density sometimes does not have such a significant effect on minimum value of conveying air velocity in moving bed type dense phase conveying. Now, as uh, the material is conveyed along uh, the length of uh, a pipeline by using compressible air, the pressure will definitely decrease and the volumetric flow rate will increase. For conveying the material uh, through the pipeline, by using uh, compressible air, you can use the ideal gas law with the Charles and Boyle's law in question and uh, thermodynamically we can represent P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2, uh, where P is uh, uh, the air pressure and uh, it is in the kilo Newton per meter square absolute. V is uh, the air flow rate in meter cube per second and T is uh, the air temperature in Kelvin and usually 1 and 2 they are the different point along the pipeline. Now, if uh, temperature is uh, considered to be constant or isothermal along the length of uh, pipeline and this is a very common practice and uh, since we are using the ideal gas law, it is purely an assumption that we are adopting the, the isothermal concept. Then it has become the P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Now, if uh, the pressure is uh, 1 bar gauge at material feed point uh, in a positive pressure conveying system with discharge at atmospheric pressure, then there will be a doubling of air flow rate and thus velocity. So, the absolute value of uh, temperature and pressure must be used in these equation. 
the velocity values they are superficial values and obviously because you have taken the assumption that is uh, the presence of the particle is not taken into account for evaluating the velocity even for dense phase conveying. Now, most data of these value such as minimum conveying velocity, they are generally determined experimentally or from the past experiences. Uh, when we talk about the solid loading ratio, again it is a very important phenomena. So, uh, the solid rate uh, loading ratio or phase density, this is a very helpful parameter for visualizing the flow. Now, if uh, the ratio of mass flow rate to the mass flow rate of air used to convey uh, the materials and expressed you can say in the dimensionless form. So, the dimensionless form can be expressed as psi is equal to m p upon 3.6 m uh, m p. Now, this, uh, this is the product mass flow rate usually represented in tons per hour and m a is the mass flow rate, air mass flow rate that is kilogram per second. Now, the maximum value for dilute phase um, are normally on the order of say 15, though this can be greater if conveying distance is short and uh, the pressure drop on the conveying line is very large. Now, if uh, materials are carried uh, with a pressure gradient uh, in the order of say 10 psi per 100 feet of the horizontal pipeline, solid loading ratio of much over say 100, it can be attained for moving bed flows. For plug flow, its value is not appropriate as the material have to very permeable and maximum values are only of the order of say 30. Materials uh, obviously, this can be reliably carried at a velocity of say 600 feet per minute and below in the plug flow type despite of uh, low value of solid loading ratio. Now, let us talk about the advantages of uh, pneumatic conveying system. Now, pneumatic conveying offers the user uh, various kind of advantages. One is that transportation of a range of products in dust free environment. Second is that flexibility in routing by addition uh, of a bend in the pipeline, it can be conveyed both vertically and horizontally. But remember, uh, when we are using the bend, then we are compromising with the pressure as well as there are certain issues with the available area in question. Then third point is that the distribution uh, to a variety of location within a plant as well as pick up from the variety of the location. So, it offers a very wide spectrum. Um, the, the fourth one is that uh, it enjoys the low manpower concept and maintenance cost. So, the economics of your plant uh, can be in, in a good uh, arena. Another advantage is that one pipeline can utilize to transport a variety of item. Only thing is that you need to flush it out the old material. Now, these pipelines can be used to transport high valued good in a very secured manner. And for these uh, pneumatic conveying system, the level of automation and controls are very simple. See, we discussed uh, various advantages of uh, this uh, pneumatic conveying system, but simultaneously there are so many disadvantages, they are also associated with the pneumatic conveying system. Now, these drawbacks are, one is that you require a very high power consumption, very high power consumption because you need to have built up a pressure, you need to have a separation, you need to have other things. Then there may be a chances of abrasion and wear and tear of the equipments because of the high pressure as well as the accumulation of the material. Since it is consuming very high power and the chances of abrasion etcetera are there, then 
you you uh, you are having a very limited option with respect to the distance so you are having a very limited distance cover up now the particle degradation may occur due to the incorrect design so the designing factor is again very important now there is a complex flow phenomena therefore it requires a high level of skill for design operating and maintaining the system now due to uh, higher power consumption the pneumatic conveying system are generally suitable for the transportation of very fine particles for a very shorter distance maybe say 100 meter or little bit plus minus the major existing system they have the capacity from 1 to 400 tons per hour over the distance of less than say 1000 meter with the average particle size of say 10 mm for transportation of solid materials this particular system should be considered as a prime option and should be evaluated against other mode of transportation now question arises that what can be conveyed uh, there are a range of uh, materials suitable for pneumatic conveyance virtually all powders and granular materials these can be conveyed and we have enlisted uh, several of them like abs powder carbon powder alumina antimony oxide anthracite uh, apatite uh, asbestos bakelite powder bagasse fines uh, bauxite blast furnace dust cellulosic materials cattle flea feed etc apart from this the cement um chalk chromium sulfate chromium sulfate grounded uh, then cobalt clay corn flour polystyrene beads pvc granules potato chips fr uh, frozen potato pulp tar straw chopped uh, wood, shredded wood then we can um, use this system for the magnesite milk powder we can use it for the fly ash uh then graphite powder flex iron ore fluor wheat uh lignite bleaching powder now for larger and uh, denser materials there is uh, a higher gas velocity and pow uh, power consumption required because uh, uh, these materials they do possess uh, Uh, some mass etc therefore you require a ga gas velocity to convey and then power consumption would be on the higher side it's often stated that uh, those particle size greater than say 15 mm may not be suitable for conveying because uh, uh, it make you, you may convey it but uh, the thing is that it will be it will not at all economical because of the higher velocity requirement so thereby you need more and more power consumption sometimes uh, blockage may create a problem so to prevent the blockage inside the pipe the conveying pipe should be at least 3 times larger than the largest particle size of the material to be conveyed so that is very important and during the course of uh, designing it must be properly addressed so at last in this particular uh, segment uh, we discussed uh, a lot about uh, the pneumatic conveying system we discussed uh, the basic aspect of uh, pneumatic conveying how we can use what are the different materials uh, can be used what are the different type of uh, pneumatic conveying systems uh, what is the, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this pneumatic conveying system and um, if you wish uh, to have further study or uh, further knowledge about this uh, pneumatic conveying system you may look uh, to the ref various references which uh, we enlisted in this particular slide there are four references you can utilize these references for further reading thank you very much